Today, I'm gonna to tell you about this recipe I made that's kind of off the wall. Let's get started. So what is this off the wall recipe that I don't feel comfortable doing? Well, there's a lot of beer recipes that I don't always feel comfortable doing because it's brand new to me. Not brand new, I've done probably 10 or 12 batches at this point. Um, I've done 300 meads, so obviously I'm better at one than the other. Today's recipe is a kind of off the wall one and that is a Czech premium pale lager uh, with agave in it. And I got this recipe from Brugger. I was looking, because I have some, I, I had, still have, some agave syrup that I'd been sitting on, kind of waiting to figure out what to do with it. So I was finally, I committed. I said, I'm gonna do something with it. I got online, looked up agave beer. This is literally called agave beer. So all my beer friends who are competent in what's happening, you can look at this and follow along with me. I printed out this recipe, took it up to my local homebrew shop, and uh, we kind of had to tweak the recipe a little bit from what I can gather. You'll see like a nice looking recipe card. There's this recipe card here, it's not as nice looking because we had to adapt some weights of things and some different malts and stuff like that. So this recipe features uh, pale ale malt, flaked corn, caramel, 20 malt, biscuit, uh, agave syrup, obviously. We changed the yeast from what it said was a White Labs European Ale yeast. We didn't have it, or they didn't have it there, so they, they said, let's try the Safel SO4, and I'm all for it. Our hops were the, we had three, really. We had Pearl, Chinook, and Amarillo. Some were dry hops, some were in the mash, all those things. So, let's, let's look at it. Pretty hazy. I'm not too familiar with agave, but, oh, we also added agave tequila per request of this. We'll talk about how I got there in a second, but really not a bad brew. I think it's probably still young, so it needs just a little bit of time. So let's go back to the beginning. How did I make this? And then we'll talk a little further. We started with a mash, of course, because this is beer. So our mash time was 60 minutes at 150 degrees. We got our water up to that mash temp, so it was 150 degrees. Put in all of our grains, so we put all that stuff in there, mashed for an entire hour. At the end of that hour, we went ahead and basically sparged our water. So we took water that was uh, 150 and poured it over the top of those grains, so hopefully get all of the rest of those sugars out of them, let that drain. We brought that whole thing up to a boil. At the boiling point, we added our first hops, our hop addition number one. Uh, at the very start was 20 grams of uh, pearl hops. Now I'm gonna say grams, I'll probably try and fix it to where it says ounces as well if you're needing that. I, I don't know if you wanna make this recipe or not. I'm just telling you about the experience of it. Pearl hops for the beginning at 60 minutes. Then we waited a long time to add some more. We waited about 50 minutes and at the 10 minute left of our hour boil, we added um, 20 grams of Chinook hops. At the flame out, which is when we turned off the heat of our boil, it says to add, it has some specialty things here, 15 grams of Chinook and 15 grams of Amarillo hops. There is some special instructions, which I found fun. It says divide flame out hops into two parts, add first part immediately at flame out, add second part after wort has cooled to 160 Fahrenheit. Stop cooling at this point for 10 minutes. A little bit tricky, because I started to cool the wort down, got it to 160, pulled my thing to stop cooling it down, my wort chiller. At this point, I had divided those hops, the 15 grams of Amarillo and 15 grams of Chinook into um, two. So it's like 7.5 grams of each in each little container. And we added part one at the flame out and then part two of it at that 160 Fahrenheit. Left it for 10 minutes, we came back, we threw our wart chiller back in there and we went ahead and brought it down to almost uh, room temp. It was like 80, we kind of, 
It was really hot that day. There are more hop additions that we'll get to in a minute, but at this point, our wort was down to the right temp and we needed some agave in here. Now, I'm pretty sure I probably could have added my agave at the, well, actually, I don't remember. I might have added it at Flame Out. At some point, I added all of my agave syrup to that brew right there and to the wort, and we mixed it in, got that going. So once we had added our agave syrup, mixed everything in, we took a gravity reading. The starting gravity is 1.055, which means that we're setting that, if this were to ferment, completely out, which it won't because it's a beer, uh, one, about a 6.5% brew, ultimately. The next hops that we have, the hop additions, it says, we are going to add, it says, dry hop at, for, or dry hop for five days with 30 ounces, oh my gosh, that's a lot, 30 grams of Amarillo hops and 30 grams of Chinook hops, not ounces, for those five days. Uh, I, I'm a little nervous about this, and so what I did was I started the fermentation and then I saw it kind of slowing down and I went ahead and added my hops in at that point. And then we did the five days of, um, time of basically setting on hops. The dry hop was finally done after the five days and we went ahead and kegged this thing. We put it into the keg. I uh, tried to rack it in a way that was gonna get less of the hop stuff, hop pieces, particles, so we could have less haze. Obviously, I got a little haze here. The last little thing about this recipe, which I found fun, it says in special instructions, add agave tequila to secondary or keg. I didn't add it to the secondary. Rather, I added my agave tequila to the keg. So that's, that's what we did. Our final step was after it sat in the keg for the, uh, about a day or two in the cold, opened it back up. I hadn't pressurized or I hadn't uh, brought it up to a high PSI yet. I just kind of put a little CO2 on top. I put two cups of tequila, agave tequila, well, all tequila, tequila is agave, tequila on top and we mixed it in, of course. Then we brought it up to 30 PSI for two days so we could force carbonate it. And here we are. This recipe, very experimental. Um, I was looking for reviews of it or somebody talking about it and based off what I could find, nobody has made this recipe before. So let's check out, let's talk more about this Czech premium pale lager recipe says agave beer with agave. All right, I'm gonna cut in real fast because we're like two months after the tasting you're gonna watch here in a second. This beer actually won a silver medal at a competition, a beer competition mostly, to uh, be exact. I sent this off to the Southern New England Regional Homebrew Competition. I put it in the experimental category. And as you can see right here, I literally just threw it in on a whim. It got second place out of 10 entries. So while we talk about this recipe and how weird it might be, or <laughs> weird it might be, <laughs> um, clearly, maybe it's worth brewing. So anyways, little fun fact, let's jump into the tasting. Welcome to the tasting. I have my beer buddy, mead brewer, uh, extraordinaire, Steven here to help I almost said rip this beer part, but I don't I don't know if we're gonna get there. I'm curious to see what you think of it because it's never been brewed other than by the person who created the recipe, which was not me. So welcome, Steven. Let's drink some beer. Right on. <laughs> it's a Monday night for anyone who's curious. So yes, that calls for a beer. So let's go ahead. Both drinking out of a can. I sent you a can. I heard yep. a little hiss there. That's good. I had a little yeah. one as well. Not bad. I could have poured off the tap, but I felt like it was more, more um, fair. Oh my gosh. I missed. Hey. I totally missed the glass. That was fun. Got it all over the front of my bar. It's a pretty deep uh, gold you got here. Yeah. So what, what can you tell us about? Um, I don't know much about beer. So give us a little yeah. bit of a understanding on this was a Czech pale lager recipe that they added agave to. And I remember in your text, as we're going back and forth, you're like, yeah, agave is not a part of Czech 
the loggers. <laughs> so. no, no, not at all. Um, so in a check pale, like um, we do a check premium, uh, it's just a Bohemian Pilsner, a check Pilsner. Um, and what that is, is kind of a bigger version of a check pale lager. What you're going to be looking for, though, in a check pale lager is going to be just a nice balanced um, malt. You want a little bit of that bready, uh, kind of crackery character going on. Um, a little bit of hops. Uh, usually it's going to be a noble hop, so it's going to be kind of herbal and a little spicy. Um, and it's the thing is supposed to be just crushable, drinkable, um, very mellow. Like it just it really light and easygoing. Um, it's usually lower in alcohol. Um, I believe a, a Czech pale is typically like 4%, 4 to 3%. And a this premium is pale high. is... Yeah, I, oh, it is. Six and a half. <laughs> oh, did you say six? six? This is six and a oh. half. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, a, a premium pale, even a, even like a, a Bohemian Pilsner, like what we make, goes up to about, I want to say six is like the threshold. Okay. <laughs> so so this, is, uh, this is actually way higher than a, than a Czech pale lager. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Um... Yeah, it's supposed to be like the the, the easy going, really light, um, kind of like their everyday beer, like their mm. sessionable beer. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head that's like a big commercial style. Um, but yeah, I think the big thing with Czech beers too is is gonna be it's a lot of water chem so i don't know if this has got you know they're, they're known for the soft water like uh, that okay. soft water profile with um it's got like low sulfites and and uh it's it's made to basically round out the hops that are used hmm. so when you do hop it like uh you you hop it pretty well in a check pills um and when you do add all that, though, it doesn't come off really sharp and aggressive. It's kind of soft and rounded by the water chemistry. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you, I did not do much, if any, with water chemistry. So you're getting, um, well, my tap water. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you know, that's a crap shoot on. Uh, the last house was decent tap water, I think. This house, I don't know. We'll see. But, well, I am curious to see if this lives up to any expectations. You obviously said you guys have one uh, local, which we didn't. I didn't mention before, but you do work at a brewery, which is, you know, yeah. you like beer and you work at a brewery. It's like the best of both worlds. So this is actually our um, Bohemian oh. Pilsner here. Dude. Yeah. It's a little side by sport. side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wash it down. Uh, You're going to wash it down. Glass, I could. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first thing I noticed on this, I mean, it, it had great carb. This, this can did carb pretty well. But okay. the first thing I noticed is the color. Um, it's pretty dark. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, that's, they still can go to gold, but hey, who knows? So, well, color. I wonder if agave really affected that at all. I don't know. I, I It's a dark, I'm like looking at it over there and it is, agave is dark from what I'm seeing, but I don't know if it's enough to really, if I added enough to really change the color. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, you definitely taste the agave right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, this, this does have, right. I will say, um, some tequila added to this because that oh, was really? yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on top of, on top of, which probably is even more alcoholic. I mean, it's probably like a seven or eight at this point, but at the end of this whole brewing process, it said either in secondary or the keg to add tequila. Then I was like. I guess so. And so I just, I dumped about half a, a, a bottle of tequila in. So it's. Wow. <laughs> wow. So smelling it, um, I, I don't, I mean, the, the, the hops can be light. Mm -hmm. I don't pick up too much of the spice or herbal hop. Most of it is coming from your, your agave and a little bit from the malt. Um, I don't really smell any faults or anything. Like it smells clean i don't get any um diacetyl or um fruit esters or anything like that that you could get mm -hmm. um no sulfur which is good um yeah it smells really clean just like agave and malt it's really really nice aroma so you get a, a hit of agave up front <laughs> yeah yeah and then it's got like a little malt backbone 
right behind that. Um, just comes off kind of nice and sweet, um, which I mean, it's it's kind of one of the things that there are there are a lot of beers and I think meads even out there where it's kind of the bait and switch where it smells one way and tastes another. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is kind of you smell exactly what you're tasting. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I would yeah. Agree. Yeah. Uh, which is nice, uh, you know, it doesn't give you that trick, a little switcheroo. Um, you do get a lot of that bready, rich malt character in here, uh, um, which is which is nice. The hops, I, I, what, I don't know how much hops was used in this, but it feels like the hops are kind of, kind of on the back end of everything, um, which isn't a bad thing. Um, you know, it's just a low hop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it can it can be a low hop in this style. Um, well, whenever you are ready for the recipe, I'm I can share it to you. Um, it's in a, a Google uh, Doc Drive, so I can just make it, share it to where you can check it out. It did use a fair amount of um, hops, from what I can see. Did this uh, was your mash temp pretty high? What well, did you have like a 150, 151? This one. I believe it was 150. I tried to hold it at 150 or 151. Okay. Yeah, somewhere. In yeah. There. Okay. Yeah, it's it it tastes like it um was it was kind of it wasn't it feel it tastes kind of like it was mashed in right around like a 150. Um, once you start going under that, you start getting a little bit dry uh, drier, um, which like people like to do for like IPAs. Mm. Um, you can start hitting like 148 and whatnot, and it'll make the simple short chain sugars, mm. and it'll dry the 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 beer out even more. Um, where this, I feel like it's it's um, still got sugar left like residual sweetness left in the beer on top of the agave that was added mm. like it's a little sweet yeah yeah well, I, well, that's so interesting i don't like again i don't know a lot about beer so it's kind of fun for you to talk about um mash temps and how they affect things because in my brain i i literally i've never made a beer mess recipe myself i always get online i'm like i want to make a blue moon clone and then you know just like find somebody's iteration of it and I follow it to a T because I'm like, I don't have the experience to know that if I go up and my mash tip, it does this or lower and I'm still learning quite a bit about it. So it's fun to hear you uh, walk us through a little bit of that too. Yeah. Yeah. It affects your, uh, your conversion and what uh, chains you're getting out of the sugars. Um, so if you want something that finishes sweeter, um, you can you want the longer chains and you can actually kind of crank up the temp a little bit uh, If you want something drier, you can kind of crank it down a little um, and it'll change your conversion and what sugars you're getting uh, Kind of a fun. Yeah, it's fun That's thing cool. uh, Yeah, so each beer style they play around with uh, with uh, mash temps a lot uh, along, along with you know water kim is a big one too um, this one. I mean, it's Tastes kind of soft. <laughs> it's, it doesn't taste, doesn't taste like it. It's got hard, any hard water in it, which is yeah. nice. Well, that's good. Well, maybe my my house water here is not that bad right now. That's, that's hopeful at least because okay. it's a little bit cheaper. Well, in the chat of this Zoom, I did throw in. I don't know if you're able to get to it if you're on a phone or what you're on now. I can always just tell you what's in it. Um, we we jacked with the recipe a little bit. Um, it's different. Then what was on there, you'll see all my adjusted, and I'll show for people too as they're watching, all the adjustments, including a different yeast, some different malts. Um, hops stayed the same. I didn't use Irish moss. This one called for it, and I was like, Meh, I don't really. Not so that's, that gives it the little haze there. That's why you're you're not super, super clear. Whirl flock or Irish moss will help clear it. There. Oh, so that's that's for clarifying then. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it'll be a clarifier that you throw at the uh, flame out at the end of the boil there. So it's like our bentonite in in meat, like whenever you're exactly like, okay, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. So this was something you pulled up just from a website, huh? I yeah, I got to went to Brugger. I was looked up um, agave beer recipe, and this was like one of the first ones to come up, even though. On here, nobody is brewed it. I mean, like, I, you can go to the bottom, tasting notes. <laughs> Does not look like anybody except for this person has ever brewed it who designed it. So, the 1024 okay. final gravity comes through. It's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, I, I'm like, oh, like li lingering to almost cloying. Like, it kind of sticks with you. Yeah. 
And yeah. uh, oh, I'm trying to, I, I, I got to go back to my true notes because I don't know if I hit that gravity. I'm still working on, in my beer brewing experience, I'm still working on efficiency and I'm not always hitting efficiency. And so that's something I'm struggling with sometimes. Do you uh, mill your own grains? I don't. I let the brew shop do it because I don't have a mill and I'm kind of lazy. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing that we do to hit efficiency um, is is adjusting our crush and making sure we're milling um, kind of at the right spot for each grain even. Hmm. Okay. Um, so we'll adjust. Like today, um, I milled in uh, white wheat at, at one spot, milled in high color at one spot, which is like a two row, then milled in a Pilsner, uh, Pil a Pilsner malt at another spot. And you just keep kind of adjusting the rollers. Um, and it gives you, um, you, I'm sure, I think you've discussed it in your Mexican lager video, but when you, you crush it, you don't want like a powder and depending upon the malting process too, um, and what, what grain you got, like uh, flake oats, you don't, you don't got to crush at all. You can just throw that in. It's oatmeal. Yeah. Um, but you need to get into some of them and, um, you need to crush them for, for the best extraction. Yeah. Interesting. Huh? Well, yeah, but you don't want to pulverize them either. Yeah. I um, eventually I'll get to this is a whole big I feel like this is like stepping stones and maybe like three years from now I'll look back on this moment and go like man I knew nothing about beer but I, how I feel right now is like I love beer I love drinking beer making beer is still so new to me and um, I, I don't know it's fun I, the agave side is also interesting because I haven't really done much with agave have you brewed much with agave before not at all no I've never brewed with agave um so this, I'm, I'm really new to this. <laughs> I smell it in here, but I, I've never made anything or I don't really drink too much tequila either. Mm. So, yeah, um, I don't either. So I'm like, I was kind of looking for, I was like, what am I tasting for? Like part of, that's part of it. I was like, I had to go and get a little taste of it to figure out what I was even going for in a lot of ways. So, yeah, I'm wondering if that's why it stands out so much. It's so prominent to me is because it's something I'm not used to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like flags. Yeah. Like, what is this? <laughs> this isn't Czech. This isn't a Czech logger. What is this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. One thing I noticed that's really interesting on here is flake corn because that wouldn't be in a Czech logger at all either. Um, that's really kind of a random item thrown in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is the whole malt bill is kind of is kind of interesting with uh you got caramel you got c20 and and yeah amber amber malt i don't know what that is but it's probably like another version of crystal or caramel um mm -hmm. uh, what yeah, about the hops what do you notice about the it was pearl and uh where where's the other ones why am i missing them chinook and amarillo what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, yeah. They they so this they went and did like a full This is this is like someone's take on like a my on my on my idea here. Is they went and they made like almost like a Kentucky common uh where they have like the darker malts um uh, with adjuncts uh, so a Kentucky common, um, you got the California common, like anchor steam, which is going to be kind of more Vienna lager ish almost, uh, Kentucky common is kind of like a pre prohibition ale. Uh, hmm. so it's going to be, uh, you know, adjuncts with like corn and things like that, but it hits with darker malts. Okay. Uh, so this reminds me like with the flaked corn and with the dark malts, it reminds me of like a Kentucky com and Kentucky common is also a lager. So it kind of reminds me of like that vibe going on um but they added agave syrup um and then they threw in uh some american hops so that's why uh, yeah that's kind of wild too but they threw in so little at least it tastes like a, a light amount yeah that it uh it doesn't come across so clear as this is american hops <laughs> yeah that's interesting yeah. and then the tequila at the end i like that to me was just like a I, I, what do we do? <laughs> Just jump a handle in, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is such an interesting, interesting uh, uh, 
recipe. Yeah, it's so, wild. Tell me something. Um, down at the bottom, they had special instructions. They said, divide flame out hops into two parts. Add first part immediately at flame out. And then add the second part after the wart has cooled to 160 Fahrenheit. Stop cooling for 10 minutes. What's the purpose? Yeah. There? So um, the different steps of your hops, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but well, the reason you're adding the additions at different times during your boil is because um, your oils, your hop oils then are actually going through a change as well. Um, you add the hops at the beginning of the boil and that's going to, completely erase all of the aroma and the flavor that you get but it's going to intensify how bitter it is uh so your your everything you add usually at your 60 and right at the beginning is going to be your bittering hops your high alpha acid hops um how bitter you want this beer just throw that in um then when you get to closer to like um the 15 um you want to start throwing in your 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 like flavoring hops um and those ones, they'll provide a little bit of bitterness still, but they're mostly there for for the flavor. The aromas may still linger around, but they might get blown out a bit. Uh, and then at flame out, that's when you're going to be and and uh, that's when you're going to be adding the uh, big chunk of your like aroma hops. Okay. Uh, so they're going to go through the least amount of change, uh, and they're going to provide the least amount of bitterness. Uh, usually, you can use something real low alpha acid and just smells pleasant, um, and that's kind of what you, you wanted to use. Um, the uh, Amarillo there looks like it's got your 15 and your 30, uh, or 15, I'm trying to look here. <laughs> yeah, that's, at your, uh, that's at your flame out, and then it's uh, dry hopped, uh -huh. time five days. So it's a dry hopped, okay, so yeah, you're, you're really going into just, you want that flavor, that mm -hmm. character. Um, and that's kind of like if you look at like what a West Coast IPA is versus like a hazy IPA. Um, hazy IPA is going to be a lot of late edition hops. And so that's why they're nice and like they're sweet and not so bitter, but you get full hop character mm -hmm. uh, because you're adding all the hops like at the end of the brew without any heat. Hmm. I've done one. I've done one. Uh, uh, I think it was. Is West Coast the fruity one? West Coast is going to typically be um, bitter. Okay. And it's typically going to be using something um, like uh, any of the seas, Cascade, uh, Columbus, Chinook could even be one. Uh, but you're going to get a lot of pine and grapefruit okay. out of a lot of those hops. Um, if you're going old school West Coast, then it's actually going to be darker. It's going to kind of come out hmm. more like this. Um, it's going to be uh, using a little crystal malt, um, Sierra Nevada great example of it hmm. uh, okay. at a about a pale ale or a torpedo if you wanted the ipa variant uh torpedo would be the better example in this case huh well so i guess the big question that people want to know is as the second person to ever brew this because we don't know how the first person liked it he might have just made it and he must have liked it to publish it obviously is yeah. this a repeatable recipe what <laughs> would you push it to people <laughs> Um, you know, I, if you like, this is very agave heavy, heavy. Um, there's so much on this that I would, I would tweak. Um, why don't I, we do I this? Would... Why don't you put, I'd be curious. Cause maybe you could take the recipe card and then what I want to, I want to Steven's adjustments. <laughs> like, what would you do? I, like we could put, I'll put that up right now too. I'll put like, you know, the original everyone's seen. What would you do? And we could put that up there. For people like if they wanted to, to do it that'd be really fun <laughs> pull out the flicked cord <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> lower a lot of that agave syrup mm -hmm. but uh you know i'd go i'd go a little um I'd, I'd be using a lot more lighter malts they're the malts that they're using are just such just sweet heavy malts uh that i think that if he he threw in like a pilsner malt um uh, That'd be fantastic. Replace like the the two row that he's got in for Pilsner malt, and it cuts down some of this this sweetness and body, and it'll dry it out a little bit. Um, and you know he could even try and I don't know what this amber malt is that he's using a UK amber malt, um, but you know the C the C twenty is probably fine. Uh, mm. That caramel there, you're just wanting that caramel there for for I mean probably color. 
Well, not yeah. much because it's only 20 Leva Bond, but like you're 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 really wanting that caramel for for mouthfeel, for body, and for head retention. So that way you get the nice cloud on top of your beer, um, and it also provides some good lacing in the glass um, when you have it, you know, in the right ratio. Interesting. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's there's a lot I would change. I just I wouldn't call this a check log. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll fix at all. We'll have a recipe card and we'll have a true true name for what this beer is because this has been. Um, I think you're right. Not true to what the recipe or the the labeling is, I guess. But I feel yeah. like it's kind of fun though to see what would happen. If they just called this an agave beer and I had it, I would be like, oh yeah, this is this is wild, you know. Um, there's a category for that. Um, there's an alternative sugars category mm -hmm. where you can put, you know, honey beer, molasses beer, agave beer, and uh, I think it would fit fine there. Hmm. <laughs> what? I'll go submit it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, Stephen, thank yeah. you for helping us um, understand more about beer. One fun thing is not only is he a great taster and a, a great mead or beer and mead taster, but he's also active in the Discord. So if you enjoyed learning about beer, um, he, Stephen obviously likes talking about beer and knows a lot, way more than I do. Please don't ask me beer questions. So hop on the Discord and uh, find him at Stevo. You can see him there, and uh, we'll chat more about beer. And maybe I'll make this a series. I, it'll be like I brewed a recipe that no one else has ever done, or you know I brewed a recipe that no one's ever really tried, something like that for beer yeah and i'll just keep That'd sending cool. them to you we'll just we'll just do this again once a month you know <laughs> <laughs> right on yeah i want to try that mexican lager you did that looks I, pretty tasty. i'll have to make a new batch i'll, I'll get that sent to you but oh no <laughs> did you drink it all mm, we'll talk we'll talk <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> steven thank you for uh for chatting and you'll see him again soon we're gonna have we're actually recording something again here in a second and we're gonna talk even more about his experience with beer and how it's helped him as a mead maker. So it's kind of fun. So stay tuned for that. But thanks again, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right. Cheers. Cheers.